Hello, in this video I want to talk about one of the more confusing aspects of controlling robots on our website. What do we do with disallow, no index, and no follow commands? There really is a common theme of confusion about no index, disallow, and no follow commands. How do these three work individually, but also how do these work in combination with each other? And truly, all of these are powerful tools that you can use to improve how search robots understand your website. How are they crawling through your website? Are they finding all the right pages that they should? No index and disallow in particular help guide robots through your website and make sure that those robots really do understand all the things that we want them to understand about our website and about the content contained on our website. However, there are many times where we see that these are applied incorrectly. People are using a disallow when they should be using a noindex, or they're using a noindex when they should use a nofollow command. And we want to make sure that we can sort out that confusion so that we can use all of these commands in the best way possible to improve our SEO. Now, before we get into talking about these three commands in particular, I want to take a step back and talk about two different search robot operations, two different behaviors that search robots have when they're going through our websites that we have some ability to influence, some ability to control. And the first of those that we have some ability to influence is crawling. So crawling is where a robot goes through and discovers everything that there is to discover on your website. It looks at all the files you have, all the pages, all the images, all the CSS, all the JavaScript, all the PDFs, all the videos, whatever it is that's contained on your website. Crawling is where the search robot figures it out. And when it comes to crawling, you can place limits on the crawling. You can tell Googlebot and other search robots that they're not allowed to look at certain parts of your website, that they're not supposed to crawl certain parts of your website. The second operation or behavior that we have some ability to influence is indexing. Indexing is where after the robot goes through the crawl, after they've looked at all of your files, after they've discovered everything on your website, robots are going to take all of that information they've gathered and they're going to decide what they should do with it. What of that information should be shown within search results? They're also going to spend some time processing that information and figure out yeah, what does this information really mean? How good is this information? If you've heard about things uh, with Google's algorithms, right? This is where the algorithms start getting applied and where Google starts really trying to sort out that content and figure out if it's good content, if it's worth ranking, and if it is worth ranking, where it should actually rank within those search results. And here again, with indexing, we can place limits on what the search robots are supposed to do. We can offer suggestions about how we want search robots to index certain parts of our website or not index certain parts of our website. All right, now that we have that background, let's move back to talking about the disallow, no index, and no follow, and really get into what each of these three commands are and figure out where we can use these to control crawling and indexing behaviors. So the first one that we can talk about is disallowing. With a disallow, you are telling the search robot that they should not crawl certain parts of your website. So you're saying you're disallowed, you're not allowed to look at these particular pages that we've specified. And where you specify that disallow is within your robots.txt file. This is what the robots.txt file looks like. It's a plain text file located in the root directory of your website. So if you want to see a website's robots.txt file, you could go to site.com slash robots.txt. For example, on Elementive's website, it would be elementive.com slash robots.txt, and you can see what those disallow commands are that we're specifying for search robots. Here's an example of one on this slide, and in this case, we have a disallow for a secret directory, and we're saying, okay, we're not allowing search robots to crawl that directory. And then you can see the next line down, we have user agent Googlebot, and then below that, we have disallow my content admin area. Now, these two are slightly different commands. That first command for a secret directory with the disallow is going to apply to all search robots. All search robots who crawl your website are going to see that and they're going to say, oh, okay, I'm not supposed to look at that directory. Fine, got it. In the other case, we're specifying a user agent. We're saying this disallow command only applies to a Google button. It gives us a little more fine-tuned control over how we're guiding search robots through our website. Now, the big thing to keep in mind is that the disallowed files may still be able to appear in search results. 
Google and Bing might find a link to a disallowed page on your website or elsewhere on the web. And once they find the link to that other page, Googlebot or Bingbot are going to look at that page and go, oh, well, I may still want to include it within search results. Something about how it was linked to still might tell those bots that they really should put them in search results. There might be value to those pages, even though they can't crawl to those pages, even though the bots can't see what's contained on those pages. So if you're trying to keep something out of the index, if you're trying to keep something from appearing in search results, you do not want to use the disallow. And in general, it's best not to disallow anything. Now, I know that seems like odd advice to say generally you shouldn't use it, but there's a couple of big drawbacks to the disallow that make it a not too helpful tool. The first of those drawbacks is the one we just talked about, that Google can index the pages anyway, and typically you're not going to want to prevent Google from crawling something, you're going to want it to not show up in the search results, so the disallow isn't going to be the right tool to use. But the other problem with the disallow is that it's only a suggestion. Googlebot can ignore your disallow commands, and as well, malicious robots are never going to follow your suggestions that you state on a robots.txt file. So if you have files that you absolutely do not want bots to see, then you should lock your files down in other ways. Use a password to prevent people from accessing a particular file, filter it down to only certain authorized users via IP address, for example, to only see that information, because you really want to prevent robots from being able to even access this. You don't want them to ignore your suggestion that the disallow is really stating. All right, let's move on and talk about the nofollow. Now, there's actually two different kinds of nofollow. There's the meta robots nofollow, and then there's the rel nofollow, which we'll talk about next. So the meta robots nofollow is a way of controlling crawling. And this meta robots tag is applied at a page level, and it's specified in the head of the website. So you can see in this example HTML we have here that we have the opening HTML, and then we have our head section, and that's where you see the meta name equals robots, content equals nofollow. And when placed at the head of a web page, the meta nofollow tells search engine robots not to crawl any links on the page. And if there are robots that respect this directive, they will crawl through the page, but they will not crawl to any pages linked to from this page. So if you don't want robots to crawl the page itself, then that's when you should use the disallow and prevent the robots from even being able to crawl that particular page. The nofollow says, okay, we've looked at page A, we've crawled page A, but we won't crawl any of the links contained on page A and go anywhere else from there. Next, let's talk about the rel nofollow. The rel nofollow doesn't really control crawling or indexing. It has more to do with helping Googlebot understand the nature of your links. The real purpose of the rel nofollow command is to tell Googlebot and other search robots that there's something different about the nature of the link. Typically, this was used to indicate that the link was sponsored or there was some kind of monetary relationship and you were indicating with that rel nofollow that Googlebot should ignore that link when it came time to evaluate links to weight the value of your page. Recently, Google has introduced other types of qualifiers uh, with rel sponsored and rel equals UGC. The rel sponsored qualifier is for any paid link, rel UGC is for any link contained within user generated content like comments on a blog post or reviews on a product page. And the rel nofollow is just sort of a catch-all now that's used for any other situations where you don't want Google's bots to associate that link that you're linking to with your website. If you decide that you want to use the rel nofollow command, then you want to specify this at the link level, so within that A tag. So within the A tag, you're going to have a rel attribute and then specify nofollow, sponsored, or UGC within that rel attribute. In this example, we're saying that the link to no robots here has a rel equals nofollow. Let's talk about the last command that we're going to discuss in this video, and that's the noindex command. Noindex, as the name implies, is a form of controlling indexing. The noindex command is specified on a page level within the meta robots tag. When the meta noindex tag is included on a page, search robots are allowed to crawl the page itself, and they're allowed to look at the page, they're allowed to go through all the content on that page, but what we're telling search robots is, hey, don't then include this page in the actual search results. We don't want this page surfacing when somebody conducts a search 
on Google. Now, a quick note is that previously you could specify a noindex on the robust.txt file itself. This is no longer supported by Google, and likely it never was supported by Google, though there were some anecdotal pieces that said it was supported in a few cases, but it's not supported now for sure. The other note here is if for whatever reason you cannot add a meta tag to the page's head, you can also put what's called an xrobots into the HTTP header. And this can be helpful for no indexing non-HTML content, such as PDFs or images, if you don't want those PDFs or images showing up in search results. All right, let's talk about how you use no index and disallow, and how in particular these two can work together. There's really three scenarios for how these two different commands can work together. The first scenario is you specify no disallow and you have a no index. In that scenario, Google is able to go through the page, crawl the page, look at everything on the page. It just won't show up in search results. The second scenario is you specify a disallow. By specifying a disallow for a particular page, you are preventing the bots from being able to look at that page, to crawl that page, to go to that page. However, as we discussed, that page can still show up in search results. Now, here's the trick question. What about a situation where you've disallowed the page and you've also specified a meta no index tag? What happens then? Well, what happens in that scenario is the same thing as scenario two. It's as if you only specified the disallow, and that's because the meta no index is specified at the page level. So if you're saying to Googlebot that they're disallowed from crawling a page, they're not going to go and look at that page. They're not going to see the code contained on that page, including the code of the meta no index tag. And as a result, they're not going to know you specified a no index. And this gets to another reason why the disallow is probably something you generally aren't going to use. If you want to prevent something from showing up in search results, which is more often than not the thing you're actually trying to control, then you're going to want to use the noindex tag, not the disallow. Next, let's talk about the nofollow and some of the guidelines you should keep in mind when you're using nofollow to control crawls. Generally, robots should be told they can follow all the links on a page. If you're too aggressive in specifying which links to follow or not follow, it can begin to look like you're trying to do what's called page sculpting. You're trying to really be manipulative in how bots move through your website. That can get you in trouble and that can start to make it look like you're spamming the search engines. What about the other kind of nofollow, the one that doesn't control crawling but does explain the nature of the link? When should you use the rel nofollow or the other rel attributes with rel sponsored or rel UGC? Well, these kinds of attributes should be used for specific instances where you really need to clearly signal the nature of the link. The prime example here is if you have a payment made in exchange for the link, like if you're running an ad or if you sponsored a piece of content on some other website, or if you have an affiliate relationship with the person you're linking to, that should be no followed. As well, any links that users have the ability to generate on your website, such as links and comments or reviews, those really do need the rel equals UGC specified. Now, finally, I've mentioned this throughout this video, but I wanna emphasize it here one more time. Disallow, no index, and no follow are suggestions. Googlebot and any other bot do not have to follow these suggestions. There are a lot of instances where you can see pages indexed and showing up in search results where you specified a no index, where you can see Google crawling pages that there was a disallow specified for, or there was a no follow command for. So if you absolutely need to ensure that something stays out of the index or something is not crawled, you need to use something stronger the no index or disallow. The other thing to remember is there's two operations here. There's crawling and there's indexing. You want to make sure you're using the right directives. You do not want to use a disallow if you mean to use a no index. You don't want to use a no index if you mean to use a no follow or a disallow. When you're using the disallow, the no index, the meta no follow, or any of the rel qualifiers like rel no followed or rel sponsored or rel UGC, you want to use these sparingly and you only want to use them after carefully considering all the implications about how using them will affect your SEO performance. All right, let's say we've carefully considered it and we've decided that yes, there is a legitimate need to use a disallow for specific things, 
Or let's say that we've decided there's a legitimate need to use a no index. How do we test these robot controls? One thing we can do is we can test our robots.txt file. In Google Search Console, you can go to the legacy tools and select the robots.txt tester. And then on the robots.txt tester, you can see your current robots.txt file, or you can modify this robots.txt file with some new command you're considering. And then you can specify a page and you can test it to see if that page would be allowed or disallowed based on what's on your robots.txt file. Another method of testing if robots can crawl and or index a page within Search Console is by using the URL inspector. So in the new Search Console, you can go to the top and put in a URL in the bar to search for that particular page or inspect that particular page. And then once you do, you will get results about whether or not this page can be crawled or whether or not it can be indexed. So under the coverage section, you can see crawl allowed. In this case, yes. You can also see indexing allowed. In this case, yes. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope you learned the difference between no index, disallow, and no follow, and now have some really good ideas about how to use these commands on your website. If you do have any questions, please let me know. For more information, you can visit my website at matthewedgar.net.